And then moving on to respiratory rate. So a normal respiratory rate would be um, anywhere between 12 to 20 breaths per minute. Having an increased respiratory rate can potentially um, impact things like coordination of breathing and swallowing. So for example, um, if you are working with an individual who has COPD, and um, if the um, breaths per minute is elevated, um, as you might imagine that um, if, it's, if the breaths per minute is elevated enough, uh, that can potentially compete um, with um, the, um, the duration of time needed for the swallowing apnea, such that the person could actually become dyspneic um, with swallowing efforts. So if they need, a, um, say, a second or a second and a half with each swallow um, for the swallow apnea or the swallowing respiratory, associated respiratory pause, um, then that ends up competing with their ventilatory needs. Now, another way that respiratory rate can be um, utilized in the context of swallowing assessment is to um, observe and compare the respiratory rate before uh, offering um, a bolus or say an ice chip or a sip of water to the patient and then after. Um, I, clinically, I have observed cases where um, it's typically people who have uh, some pulmonary impairments. It might, you know, it could be COPD, it could be other types of um, diagnoses that are impacting the pulmonary system. And I might observe, um, you know, maybe slightly elevated respiratory rate at rest. And after offering one sip of water or one tiny ice chip, um, observing if you um, observing the respiratory rate jump way up to say over 35. Well, clearly that is some clinical information that needs to be factored into the overall uh, swallowing assess assessment. Um, because that's an indication that swallowing in and of itself is uh, competing with ventilatory needs. Mm -hmm.